Oh, this is going to be great. Welcome to the White House Pod oh, oh. with David A. R. White. Uh, all right, let's talk about Trisha Love Vargas. Um, Trisha Love, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Okay, let's just start at this very beginning. Let's just talk about your hair. Oh, thank Goodness you. Goodness gracious. Is that natural? Like, did you, have we always had such a mane of... <laughs> That is a great intro. Actually, I just opened LA Style House, which is our beauty bar downtown LA, where you can get your hair extensions, makeup, all the other good stuff. It's an extension to LA Style Magazine. So, no, this is not all. By my the way, hair, she is. Uh, she's the. Extensions. You know, she runs LA Style Magazine. We're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. But, uh, so these are extensions. But thank you very much. Wow. Well, yes. those look amazing. You look LA like you like walked out of like a uh, <laughs> some kind of a <laughs> a period movie where there. Their hair is always absolutely perfect and very flowing. Thank you. you know? Tresemme commercial. There we go. There it... Panty pro V. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, all right. So let's talk about this. Okay. Because you got this LA Style magazine here. First of all, you're from Queens. Yes. I was born in Queens. Okay. And then you, you were raised in Orlando, Florida. Yes. That seems to be a thing. A lot of people come down from, <laughs> from New York to Florida, especially during the pandemic. Uh, uh, I yeah. met so many people from New York. There. Yeah. So my parents were a bit like, well, my grandparents, I should say, the West Side Story. We're all familiar. Like, right, they were all from the island, from Puerto Rico, and then they did that big movement to New York. And did they um, dance when they did it? I think so. I mean, I think that they were they were doing some salsa throughout their their transition. But mm. um, that's how I was born in Queens and raised in Florida. We moved there when I was eight. Me and my mom. Okay. And uh, and how was that growing up in Orlando, Florida? I'm actually headed to Orlando, Florida next week. But okay. uh, yeah, is it was Disneyland as yeah. Disney World as big there? As, yeah. So my that? aunt worked there, um, and may she rest in peace. But it was mm. quite. Um, it was quite a thing. I felt like I was an unofficial tour guide for Disney World every time family would come in from New York and here's a small world. And, you know, like I knew every inch of that place. Did you have like uh, a lifetime pass or did they, did they make you buy a season ticket or did they even have season tickets back then? Uh, well, we got in because like when people worked there, Amazing you get... Amazing hair. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to bring in friends or family like a certain amount. So like that was how I went there all the time. Okay. It's quite an amazing perk, actually, when you think about it. Wait a second. you How does that work? I don't know if it's still the way it was, but back in the day, you'd get a certain amount of tickets for friends and family or family. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, they have all these season pass. I don't even know if they have the season passes any longer. After the pandemic, I lost track of... I have children, and so... We went to Disneyland a lot here, and then, you know, the pandemic hits, and then they mail your stuff back. Eventually, they mail your cards back and say, yeah, you're, good. you're no longer going to need these because we've been closed for so long. Right. Anyway, so when was the last time you were at Disney World? Oh, I don't know. That's a great question. Have you taken Xavier? Yes. So I guess it must have been within, I don't know, maybe eight years ago or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Disney. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, mm-hmm. so growing up in Orlando, what is your favorite... Uh, uh, when, when did you move out of Orlando? How old were you? So I moved out. That's a great question. I, I uh, went to college in Miami, and I don't know. I guess I must have been like 19 or something or 20. Did you yeah. go to college like for design or for yeah. uh, fashion or mm-hmm. or ma- like how to run a magazine? Like what? what? <laughs> so I went to – I got my associates in Orlando for business marketing management. And then I went down to Miami for their – there's a school called the Art Institute, Miami International University of Art and Design. And I was studying fashion design. And um, I was there for almost a year. And then I um, miraculously – conceived my son on birth control and that's where my life changed wow yeah i um, say that because it's a really big piece you were I, young honestly, right? i wasn't you were, gonna have you were him. you were young obviously mm-hmm. um and uh and then how did did you did, were you out of college then no i was in college no i know but did you leave college then or did you stay in college and have oh. a child and right do the whole thing? um so i essentially fast forward the story that's how i ended up in la me and my son's father moved out here when i was about six months pregnant and i continued to study for a bit and then um after that i withdrew from from the school I enrolled in in LA um, shortly after I, I, I gave birth to my son. And then um, with probably within six months, I started my first company. 
And what was your first company called? L.A. Style House. Oh. Yeah. So it's been on hiatus a bit in the back back burner because the magazine's taken the forefront. Yeah, because, you, okay, so you started L.A. Style House with the hair extensions and the hair and, the, like, I mean, was it, because uh, now you actually have a location, right? Yeah. Okay. We have a, we have a physical location. So, um when I started it initially, it was a boutique styling agency. So it was by appointment only, and I would style people, whether it was like on a personal basis or I did some like set style, like network styling. And that was like me getting my feet wet in the industry. And um, I could have used you. I could use some help about <laughs> styling, by the way. And so could you guys, FYI. <laughs> yeah. So that's... she was thinking that as she walked in. I mean, that's that's everybody probably always thinks of that when you're like, I have the <laughs> style house. Like uh, they're like, oh, wow. How do I? Uh, how do I? Yeah. As Who long do as I you're call? comfortable in what you wear, then it shines through. It... But um, that's what we did, and then I started doing events to get more clients. Like I wanted to get more clients, so. That's where the evolution really evolved because um, it was on the ground floor of a building downtown that had a beautiful rooftop. So I approached the owner and I said, listen, you have occupancy and I want more clients. Let me do these events. And that's where I started doing these mixer art shows on the rooftop. And that's where L.A. Style House, that's where I really started to build connections. How did you, okay, were you good at events like from high school? Like were I've you putting high events. school events on? Or no. like when did you start? Like what was when your I first event? Him. That was it? Yeah. First, and we'd have 300 people every third Wednesday I mean, you of the have month like, that would come out. Okay, but before that, did you have like, where was where did this chip come in you? You know, because it's like a, to want... throw a party <laughs> is not a, I was a DJ for a little while uh, in my, somewhere in my late 20s when my acting career had, had uh, you know, was careening and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I needed money and then I, whatever. Anyway, um, uh but it's a whole, it's an art form yeah. to throw a good party yeah, um, and to have a good event. And so what was the thing inside of you that said, oh, hey, you know what, I could do this? I mean, honestly, what, what it started as is like I did a grand opening because I opened L.A. Style House again. It was by appointment only, but it was a storefront on the on the street. And then we had our loft that was upstairs. Anyway, what triggered the idea of events was um, we had a grand opening on the rooftop. And I had a girlfriend who was like really passionate about um, AIDS Awareness Month. I, can't, I forget what the organization is. So that was like kind of like the beneficiary we were raising awareness for. And we brought together all these people. And I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Like, if I could bring this many people together on a reoccurring basis, I should be able to build this LA Style House name. So that's where the thought came from the first event that I did. And then we continued to do it. Um, we did it. I did it almost for seven months. Every month, 300 people would come. I'd have a live performance. I'd have restaurants. I would essentially in-kind donate food the building would provide is you know the the drinks so it just all came together it was a pop-up art show now the the um the folks that would be attending this now were they people who needed hair extensions <laughs> were they uh no. you know what were they i mean like like what was the what was the tar who who was targeted in the fact right. that you know like was roger neal targeted uh <laughs> he should you know, have been um, you should have I, been <laughs> i don't know i don't know that i should have been what year is this by the maybe way maybe you, you have an context? invite in your inbox <laughs> <laughs> what, what year was this <laughs> this is 2000 and was it he 12 2012 2012 okay so what i did was i understood yeah, I that been targeted at no. 2012. no i don't know <laughs> What I did was I understood that like people that I wanted to style, right? Um, and at that point we weren't doing hair extensions. This is a new thing, but it was just like wardrobe, hair, makeup. They had to have a certain income and they had to have a certain budget for that, right? Because otherwise it's not a target client. So when I approached the owner, I said, listen, let me put on these shows. It's called City of Angels Art in the Sky. I'll target the financial district because his building was like right next to the financial district downtown LA. I was like, that's my target demographic, and clearly that's you have, yours. By the way, did you have art for that city? What was it called? City Angels in city the Sky. City of Angels Art in the Sky. It was just like a theme name that that we. What came a up great with. name! Thank you. That I would love to see the art that you know had yeah. that name because it's such a cool name. Yeah, thank you. That should you. be like on a mural somewhere. Right. I think so. It's it's super really cool. Good.
Um, so yeah, so I would literally take every magazine that I would find and I would highlight like the editors and then I would invite all of them and I would print flyers and put them in every single newspaper downtown. I would get into like the really nice buildings downtown and I like slip them underneath people's doors. Like, I'd wow. call the receptionists and buildings and be like, hey, I'm inviting your floor. Like, oh, I'm inviting your floor. Something. Skip traffic hour. Come, you know, have some wine and network. So I was like really looking for them. Do you still come. do those events? Because um, I'm looking for my invite <laughs> right now. D- Dylan seems to he can't June twenty second at the Grammy Museum. Ah, well, that's there like we go. that's I, that's even better. Well, for, we have to segue to that. Yeah, First but, of all, okay, so all right, we'll put a pin in this story for a okay. minute. How that's pretty cool though. Uh, how did you? What what prompted you to then start or take over LA Style Magazine? Like, how do you bring that back? How does someone bring a magazine back? Yeah. Especially given where we're at now with online media and everything else. Like, I mean, I'm looking at your magazines here going, I would like to read those. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> it should it's be on a, my mantle. <laughs> it should be your coffee table. Um, well, thank you. That's one of my, my favorite questions because it really gets um, to give me an opportunity to point back to God. Um, when I was doing those events, they were almost for a year. Every month, it was very, I burnt out. To tell you the truth, I mean, I, my son was like maybe two. Um, wow. So I Is felt, it hard raising a child in Los Angeles? Um, it has its moments, but it's been the most rewarding. Like, I wouldn't have done anything that I've done today if it wasn't for him because he's been my motivation, like wanting to build a legacy for him, something that he can like continue to, to you know, to do and offer him something. Um, but I did those events, I burnt out, I felt really lost in my in the busyness, and I was just like, and the relationship with my son's father had fallen apart, so I just felt like lost in the doing. And I'm a, I've am always been a believer, obviously I left for a certain time during adolescence and just had my own whole experience, but God has always been the center of my life and really my purpose. And I rededicated my life to the Lord when I um, had my son, so I was on a new journey with him. So in feeling lost in the busyness, I went back to my prayer time and was like, okay, God, like, what is life about? Like, I'm doing these things and they sound really cool and I'm progressing in my career, but I feel empty. Like, there's no purpose to what I'm doing. Why am I bringing 300 people together every month if nobody's finding out about you? Like, I maybe only talk one-on-one with two people because I'm so busy, like, during the event. So where are people really finding out about you? And I remember I went back to go see my mom and it was like um, Thanksgiving. And she opened the door, and I'll lead with saying, because I don't want people to like, you know, she's healthy today, and it's a praise report, and she's great. But in that moment, she was very sick. She was 88 pounds when she opened the door. And I was like, and she was on a treatment that she had been on. When I was in high school, she also was like, I almost lost her too. So God's had his hand on her, you know, many times. But the point is that she didn't tell me, because she didn't want to distract me from what I was doing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what's going on? She's like, oh, I just you know, didn't want to detour you. So in that moment, I remember I started a prayer that I prayed for almost a year consistently and it led with gratitude. And I'm like, God, thank you so much for the experiences I've had in my life that I didn't even know I could do events or that we could do these things. I'm grateful, but I feel really empty. Please let me know what my purpose is. I want to have a global impact to share your love and light with the world. And I prayed that for almost a year. Mm -hmm. And um, I came back to LA I stood in Florida for quite some time, probably like seven months or something. And during that time, thankfully, my mom got better. My aunt ended up passing away. So it was like another like life altering experience. Like, dang, like life is not promised. And I came back to L.A. I opened the scripture, was saying the same prayer again, reading, and it dropped in my spirit, L.A. Style magazine. And it was his answer. Okay, so how long have we been running this? So that was in 2015. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And and we put out uh, how, how many, is it once every month or once a year? Or no. when, how often does Zelly Style Magazine come out? Yeah. So we've had, we have, we've continually had an online presence. So there's articles that go up all the time. But as far as print is concerned, we have essentially consistently done like one per year um, has been how we've gone about it. And I think there may have been instances where there was a couple times we did two per year. Um, and now... We're firm on the on the one per year, and it's actually in the form of a hardcover coffee table book. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. And it only, um, you know, it's a lineup of the most influential people of that year. So it's highly coveted. It brings together great leaders and then industry leaders who who can essentially join our network and sponsor being featured alongside others if they qualify. 
And now you do uh, an award show every year. This is our well. first. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. What led that? Like, how do you, I mean, what goes on in this brain of yours? <laughs> uh, uh, is it just kind of like a prayer? You, you, me, meaning like you, you know, you go up on a mountain. I have these writers of ours that uh, that uh, they go up on a mountain and pray. We ask that them, "Hey, can you amazing. write this?" And they're like, "Great. Well, we'll be back with you. We're going to go up on a mountain and pray." <sighs> And, I would uh, love to go to a mountain. Well, yeah, I as much as that's nice closet. to hear, except the fact that we're like, um, are you still on the mountain? Or, you know, I, I, we don't know whether they're really going on a mountain or they're just, uh, you know, we're on In a theory, mountain, but... you know, and we're praying whether or not uh, we're supposed to come back down and write your, yeah. what you're asking us to do. So um, do you, is it similar or do you, by the way, where do you, where do you have your devotionals or your prayer times? Is it like in a closet? Is it on a mountain? Is it out in your backyard? Is it in your front yard? Like yeah. Where, where's for, in your car? For, for quite some time I was doing it just in my living room, but now I am doing it like in a separate room, actually in, in my room. So that way I could have a closed space and it just feels a little bit more intimate in that, in that setting. And my thing is, um, I remember my journey like probably like a year ago. I was like, I like again, I always believed in the Lord, but I really consider myself like a super lukewarm Christian. Like I'd still go out on Fridays and like party pretty hard and then like, you know, still go to church on Sundays. But I felt like I wasn't doing what everybody else in the world was doing. Like I wasn't doing drugs so I could go out and like celebrate a little bit, like drink and have a good time. But um, so about a year ago, I was like, I really want to start living a life that has a lifestyle that reflects you. So my thing was like, I literally said out loud, 10 minutes a day keeps the enemy away. Like I'm committing to reading the Bible 10 minutes a day in the morning. So that's like what my devotional time looks like. Like 99% of the time I take at least 10 minutes to read the scripture. I literally set a timer to be disciplined and then spend some time in Is this like an prayer. early morning thing or do you wake up, have breakfast and then do it? Or do you wake up, breakfast, work out, then do it? Like where does it yeah. fall normally? My goal is for it to be the first thing I do when I wake up before yeah, I eat, beautiful. before I go to the gym. It doesn't always happen. Um, and if I miss it like at least I'll try to figure out 10 minutes so my goal really is it f- to be like to give him the first 10 minutes of the day mm. mm-hmm. it's awesome yeah so all right so then the magazine the award show came out of what did it come out of prayer time or did it come uh yeah. or was it hey so many people are asking for this like yeah uh, no I I do believe it came out of prayer time it had like you know it's I like to say that I um and I spoke to a pastor about it to kind of give me a little bit of clarity because I'm like very much into like the power of imagination and manifestation. But I found myself kind of near like veering toward like like more of the like new age type of thing. And I'm like, I know there's power in this and I know it comes from the scripture, but how do I manifest with God? So that's what I like to say is what I do. Like it's manifesting with God, like Lord, let your will be done. Like speak to me, give me these ideas. So when I do get these ideas, I do give him credit because he's opening the door and, you know, making a way and the LA style annual award show. This is the first one. It's happening at the Grammy Museum at LA Live. So the venue is just, you know, absolute excellence. And it's within their Clive Davis Theater. And we have... um, How cool is that? Like, how do do we decide that? I scouted out various locations and just You're like a producer brain, like creator, (laughs) entrepreneur, like hairstylist. (laughs) (laughs) You know, um, if somebody actually has to sum you up, which is we have a sum up, but this is why you can't like do it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That's true. Very sweet. Well, I, I, I'm going to switch now. She's all, she, she's also just on the off chance that we didn't know, you know, doing all this. She's You wrote a book. Right. And but can I say something about the awards? Because you you're coming. I am coming you're to high this. Five. I did. I did get a, uh, I got an invite. And you're I am showing issue. up. You're in the issue. I'm in the issue, yes, too. Yes, you're in the most influential wow. issue. Wow. I mean, come on. God's not dead. Like, yeah, this well, is thank like you. huge. Oh, that's sweet. yes for the kingdom and what you're yeah, doing and like blessed. your vision is phenomenal. So of course we're honored to have you. Thank you. Um, the award show is like I said June 22nd. If anybody's interested, plug. You can go to. Oh, sorry, that's my timer. <laughs> I don't your, know what that was Did your was own for, time though. run out? <laughs> was your plug running out? <laughs> I like that she sets her own plug of like, uh, okay, I got... <laughs> LAStyleAwards.org. Okay, guys. And we have um, 
Robert Hetrovic from Shark Tank yeah. coming. He's receiving his award. That's awesome. Jamie Kern Lima, she sold her business for over a billion dollars and became the first female CEO in L'Oreal history. She's um, right up there almost with you. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so those are just some of the headliners that are coming. Devon Franklin sharing yeah. his testimony, receiving awards. So very, very exciting. Thank that you. is exciting. Yeah, that's I totally just exciting. plugged it in there, but thank you. Well, that's okay. We could still plug it more okay. if you'd like. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's actually amazing, and 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 uh, and th- there's never enough time in these things. By the way, you know, you just kind of talk, and then you have to like go on to something else, and you're segueing, and and uh, but uh, where do people get your magazine though? Um, LA Obviously. Style Magazine. Do you have to com. live in Los Angeles to pick up the the hard copy? You can order it, so it's like very much like a book. So you can order your coffee table book online. Any yeah, version it's that beautiful. You like. Thank you. I want to see. Can I? Can you shuffle that over here? Can I touch it? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just show you. This is like our like history. A, yeah, I love that, and it's like hardcover too. Yeah. That is beautiful. Very cool. Thank you. So yeah, the book, I love I'm actually doing in the form of a hardcover, too. Okay, so we're going to your book, which yeah. is Royalty, the Scripture Unveiled. Okay, yeah. so what I brought in a little the print world? Demo. Yeah. I'm fascinated with this magazine. I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to take this home and read it. Thank Sorry. you. And it's going to go on my coffee table. <laughs> That's a beautiful, beautiful. Um. So, yeah, this is, like, very much in tune with... Hold on, I gotta, I gotta wait one more second. Do you oh. call this L.A. Style Magazine or L.A. Style Book? Because it's like a, it's like a, it's hard copy, right? It's like a yeah, book. Yeah, it, it is, but it's but is the L.A. Style Magazine. magazine. Yeah. Okay, because those are so, magazines, this is, a, yeah. Right, it's just soft cover that I brought in some from those are back in too. the day. Wow. Thank you. Okay, all right, we're on to your book. Yes. Is this your first book ever written? It is. Okay. Yeah. So Do you I've, journal a lot? Is that where it comes out of? Or or what was the, uh, were you on a mountain or in a backyard? Or where did this um, one? Came through prayer time for sure. But I think so. This is like, it's the first of its kind. I haven't found another out there. If anybody has another out there, excuse me, please let me know. But I haven't. So this is like, it's fashion photography mixed with scripture that's put into affirmations. Wow. So like. It's either direct scripture and it says it, or it says that it's adapted from and it puts it in first person. Because again, the scripture is there and like the secret and all these other things, they're wonderful. They're powerful principles, but they're rooted in the scripture. Like the word manifest is in the Bible, I think over 140 times in different variations. Like you manifest your healing, like all these other things, like that's where it comes from. So this book is to help women see themselves as the queens that God has created them to be, for them to walk in their power. Um, I even give like a little intro so it has my testimony that's about 10 pages and then even an intro of how do you really activate this power because it's one thing to just manifest and say random things but you want to be manifesting God's will in your life and the way to do that is by submitting your life to him because otherwise you just be calling in whatever and then like I don't want that so it's um it's powerful proclamations you want me to read one yeah of course okay I'll read I love it Uh, I'll, I'll read a prayer, okay? Because this one's a prayer. Yeah. You see the fashion photography? Yeah. And who's okay. uh, who's the picture on the on the left? So I've actually been working on this for almost six years. Okay. It's been on the back burner, and I've kind of dabbled in it. But they're actual images that I've hand selected and gone ahead and purchased that work. They're like stock images that work to to bring the scriptures to life. Okay. And they yeah. kind of go along with the whole LA style, everything. Yeah. yeah. So this one is right. so a lot of the book is based on Esther, right? And and the anointing and the favor and things of that to walk in that that calling. So it says, A time to be bold is the headliner, and then it leads with the scripture. It's Esther four fourteen. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And then the prayer says, Dear Lord, help me to be bold like Esther, to operate in the authority in which you have positioned me to have. I pray that your will be done in my life and shine through everything I do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm. I love that. Well, I think we should just close. <laughs> but we can't close yet because we don't want to close yet. <laughs> Thank you for giving that's me beautiful. the opportunity to share. Uh, oh, that's that's uh, it's it's actually wonderful. It's it's uh okay, so where do where do people get the book? So, currently it's available 
available for pre-order. Um, they will be releasing in late summer after the main event, but um, meaning the award show. But yeah, you just go to trishalove.com, um, specifically slash royalty, and the books are there. But if you go to trishalove.com, you'll see the, the book there. You can click on it. How did you get your name? Um, so my dad wanted my first name actually to be Love, and my mom won that one. She was just like, no way. And I got Trisha, or in Spanish is Tricia. And then um, she actually got that from a soap opera. But my middle name. <laughs> She's like, no way with Love. <laughs> Let me take this soap opera name. <laughs> but Love got put in the middle as my middle name. Uh, it's a great name. I, I'm actually, sh- I was wondering whether you, you just made that up when you yeah. got to Los Angeles. Yeah, uh, I get that a lot. <laughs> um, and then Vargas, obviously. Is, uh, yeah. That's your, um, do you speak Spanish uh, yes. pretty good? Si sí, habla español. Mm, yeah. yeah. Puerto Rican. Yeah. Yeah. Like a real Puerto Rican. Um, like a New York Rican. <laughs> there's a difference <laughs> meaning that they're so much more cultured like puerto ricans from the island like they're like puerto rican you know and we like admire them we carry the culture <laughs> do you go back to puerto rico very often um last time i went was um probably two summers ago for almost a month it was in a great experience with my mom and my son yeah wow. mm-hmm. That's, did you sit on a beach or was there like a beach yeah. somewhere around yeah everywhere there's beautiful <laughs> beaches <laughs> Yeah. I still haven't been to Puerto Rico. Oh, you it's ridiculous. Go. Yeah. I actually, uh, my business partner went like two weeks ago and I was supposed to go to Puerto Rico. And then I, my son had basketball games. And mm. so it's, uh, I was like, I think I need to be at the basketball games yeah. instead of sitting on the beach in Puerto Rico, even though that's where I, I secretly would have liked to have yeah. been. Yeah. <laughs> the food is so good. <laughs> um, all right. So what, what else do we do uh, in our spare time when we're not, uh, this, uh, you know, helping everybody have amazing <laughs> hair, running a magazine, doing an award show event, uh, putting out a, a Bible study book. Is it a Bible study? It's not even a Bible study book. That's it's like a, a terrible. I would call it devotional, like a, right? Like affirmational a devotional. devotional. Yeah, but that, it, but that's, in a, that's a new devotional I, that I've never seen before. Yeah. I don't know. That's I, like an L.A. style devotional. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, wait, it's, it's called, is it called Royalty? Yeah, Royalty, Volume 1, The Scripture Unveiled. And then subtitle is Promises from the King of Kings to His Heirs. How many do we have, uh, can we look forward to? Are we going to um, do one, one a year? Or are we don't, are we going to? Uh... So this is Volume 1, but I would like Volume 2 to actually incorporate a journal piece in it where people could actually like write yeah. um, in it. And then um, I do envision, I do want to do one for the kings out there. Hmm. Those would incorporate more so like um, really majestic animals like lions and things of that nature, but that are scriptures that are calling the men to be the kings that they're called to be. How hard is it to be? This is like a this is a question that I always get on my social media, and I would imagine you have gotten a lot. Um, uh, and and I I anyway, how hard is it to be a Christian in Los Angeles in the midst of all of this, or do you feel like God completely called you to do it? In a way that he gifted you clearly in a lot of the you know things mm-hmm. that make sense in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Like, why are you still living here? <laughs> because you do LA Style magazine, you know. Do you, you know? Yeah. I mean, award shows are harder in you know wherever if you're oh, living right. in Kansas. Right. I, he's from Kansas, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and I am Think as of well. the red shoes. Yeah. Um, we didn't bring ours with us, hence we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow brick road. Um, so yeah, uh, why LA? You're saying, oh, well, yeah, oh my gosh. And I honestly think a part of this whole, like, what would I say, concent- consecration season and just like- I know you were going to say like concentration camp. No, like, uh, that's no, a, uh, no, I don't mean that, you know, but it's Los Angeles and we've had our yeah. rough years the last couple of years. It's not been a fun place to live here. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the magazine, the, the, the- the assignment, I would say, because I rejected it for quite some time. I was like, you know, you finally got answers to prayer. You're like, no, thank you. I'm good. That was me. And um, I 
I had a partner that was helping me as the editor in chief in this, and now she's actually in Puerto Rico and not with us. But the point I'm trying to make is that it, it was a very clear assignment and it's been progressive. So it's not like we didn't have this massive award show that we're doing now with Robert Hetrovic and Jamie Herlima and you coming and all these other people and Will Packer in the issue. I mean, it's really jam packed. Oprah was in our last issue. It didn't happen in 2015. It's really been a journey of like, development and just like the crushing of the grapes and i'm like god you called me to do this like where's the you know yeah. where where are the riches you know like this is hard and i think it really was because god was really like testing and developing me like even you know because I have been exposed here in LA to like this extremely glamorous life, whether it be friends or these other things. And it's like that test, are you going to take that? Or are you going to say no to things because you know that I'm not in it? And I'm so happy to say that he has opened my eyes, my spiritual eyes. And I'm like, wow, like, it's such a new level of awakening, but it's taken these years to get there. And I and I started over in 2018, I started with zero, like literally zero. I left my son's father, all financial security, and I like made a decision to start over and, and provide a healthy environment for my son. But I've been tested a lot throughout the way and I'm grateful for it because it's been progressive and it's allowed me to strengthen my spiritual like self to not fall because it could be really hard in LA and I pray that I don't you know that I don't fall and that his grace continues to strengthen me but um, you have to say no to a lot of things if you really want to be an example I'm not perfect but like if I'm going to talk That's about not what Jesus Roger like, said. <laughs> <laughs> I try to try to do my part that's all okay so um uh uh, uh i don't even know if, and and just just to clear that up what, what cuz Roger's married and has a family and everything like that so I, uh, to be clear, Roger, you've known, you guys have known each other though, right? This is how I met you is through Roger Neal. Yeah, Roger's publicist. amazing. Yes, publicist yes, of yes. every year. Yes. I was going to say the other year, but every year. Ah, they went to the same church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So are you still going there? You still go to I'm Oasis? I'm not. I'm helping. Um, I'm a part of a church in um, LA, the way LA, and they've been such a blessing and I'm part of their campus. Do you like living? Like you live in downtown Los Angeles. Yes. Do you like living down there? Well, I like. I like. I was born in New York, so I like like the More city, city and luxury and buildings and high rises, as opposed to like having to mow a lawn. So I love where I live, the street mm. that I live on. Um, I like mowing lawns. Yeah, no. I mean, but my vision is to be <laughs> not at all. I, I think we all have turf now. <laughs> I don't think. We, does anybody still have a lawn in Los Angeles? <laughs> is, I, I think know. it's outlawed to have a lawn. I mean, I just like like you know, there's a rooftop pool, and it's just like. You know? Well, that's divine. Sure. Yeah. I like that. But my vision is to live by the water. Like, I want to wake up and I want to see Not by the rooftop windows. pool. No, I no. just want to see the ocean. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it seems like you're really, uh, you know, um, going to really dig in deep there and try to live by the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, give up a lot of the uh, wonderful lifestyles of. Well, of, I'll trade that for, up for a, the, a home in front of the water <laughs> any day. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, homes. If you're if you're in the home market, not that I'm a real estate person, but uh, they're very inexpensive. Specifically, like in Malibu, right on the water. Yeah. You could live right next to Spielberg for like little to no money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah, now he has like a probably a fifty million dollar house, but. The next one over, I'm sure, is you know very very inexpensive. Hey, <laughs> um, um, I will say something though that I forgot, and I don't want to forget to say it because yes. it's actually really exciting and came up within the past month. Okay, for the first time in my life, I've been asked to be, and I've accepted a role as an executive producer for a new film called Mom's Rising. Wow. And it's all rooted in manifestation and things of that nature. But my focus is obviously in the scripture and this book, Royalty. But they've worked with like, they have like a connection with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. So like another film that they have, Damian Young is a part of it. They've worked with Barbara Corkin, Rob Dyrdek. So it's an exciting project to be a part of nice. coming out later this year. So you're gonna start producing movies now too? As an executive producer. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to you for some tips. Oh, sure. Uh, come on. You definitely know what you're doing. I mean, we've done a few movies. Yeah. yeah. No, I look at this 2015 because it kind of sticks out. I don't see too much, you know, that happened in 2015. We started our SVOD, our our PureFlix.com, the streaming video uh, on demand part of uh, PureFlix. Um, I just saw in the 2015. movie the other day. Um, Which movie? 
literally it was before you even told me about David A.R. Um, the one with the little girl. What's it called again? Miracles? It's on Pure Flix where the bird um, comes back to life. Mm, okay. Oh, it's That's so a part good. of the beauty of you, beauty me, like, about Pure Flix is that I don't even know what movie you're talking about, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it's not a plug plug for Pure Flix at all, but there's you know there's like ten thousand uh, pieces of content on that on it's the so on the. Uh, the, the network now so mm-hmm. um but that's cool i'm glad it was a good movie yeah. did you see redeeming love by the way because when you're reading your <gasps> oh my your, god uh, tears yeah yeah i Great only movie. saw the end of it i saw like maybe the last 20 or 30 minutes because yeah. my mom was like it's so crazy you say that How literally you see this the is last, last 20 30 week? minutes you came in on amazon prime <laughs> and watched it or you you came in late to the theater because you were watching an avenger movie and you're like well i still got this popcorn left i'm just gonna sneak into this redeeming love thing redeeming love is the one that was like the lady was like a part of the burlesque she was or yeah. whatever the, yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's based burlesque. on the best-selling book um yeah of i think the one of the best-selling women Christian books of all time. Yeah, yeah. I was like literally in tears <laughs> um, at the end. But you didn't so see big. the whole movie. I need to go back. It's because yeah. my mom. Okay, so she's like yeah, she's how visiting did you see me from half Florida. This movie. And she goes, oh, my gosh, Trisha, we got to see this. I've been looking for this movie. My mom is, like, really funny. She's a character from New York, for sure. But she's like, I've been looking for this movie for months. I saw part of it, and then it disappeared, and I never knew how to find it. And I don't know if it's because she's visited me, and she doesn't have her TV, so it doesn't save where she was watching what she was watching less last. And then um, I was like, oh, cool. She's like, yeah, here it is. And then we just saw the last 30 minutes. It was so good. Um, uh, well, it is. I think it's on Amazon Prime right now. Probably that's, and that's how we why, saw it. Yeah, because it was um, flashing. It was like one of their whatever, uh, like a week or two ago, um, yeah. up there for quite a while. But um, yeah, and I don't even know where it's everywhere though. Redeeming love is everywhere. It was something though that we tried for, for many many years to make, and uh, it was it was buried in Hollywood, you know, development um, uh, forever. And then we ended up getting uh, Cindy Bond brought it, bought it out of. Fox or somewhere like that, and then came to, and then we met with her and Simon, and then and made so that movie cool. down in South Africa, and That's that was our great. yeah, it was a yeah, we've shot a few things down in South Africa, but that is it's a beautiful movie. I love, I'm so proud of the movie, um, and yeah. um, and it was not a you know an easy thing to make, but certainly it you should. If you haven't I'm seen gonna it watch the whole thing. And you should watch the, the whole thing. The last 20 minutes it's got me. I can't imagine what the whole thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful movie. Will yeah. Be. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was thinking about that when you were reading your devotional, yeah. of because uh, you know, yeah. Obviously, it's about it's about a woman. Yeah, <laughs> went through and, some uh, stuff. Yeah, and God's love and the whole thing. Yeah. Book of Hosea. Um, okay, so uh, so what else do we want to plug here before before we're like forced to wrap up? Wait, I didn't get back to this. Okay, um, so how's dating in L.A.? I mean, I think that's probably the question. That's probably, I mean, as much as everything else is wonderful, everybody else wants to know that, you know? You know. Is it just because when you have absolutely stunning hair, is it just (laughs) the easiest thing in the world to do? Um, Oh, my gosh. I would say that's the hardest part. Out of all the places in the planet, is Los Angeles the easiest to date? No, what I would say, and I don't, I don't. I don't know if it matters where you are. Honestly, I could get LA because like there's like like glitzy things that are distracting. But for me, my biggest journey has been giving that part of my life to the Lord and really surrendering it to Him, which I think it's been the it's been it's been beautiful. So I'm just at a really happy place where I'm like, God, let Your will be done. I'm so excited. I'm in a full manifestation mode of like I'm so excited that You're preparing my husband, that You're sending him to me, that he's like coming running to me and he's a man of God. He fears you. He dedicates time to read the word daily and growing spiritually. So I'm excited about that next chapter, but I've totally given it to God and um, I'm waiting for him to make it really clear and reveal who that is. Is it hard though to meet like a, uh, that was a beautiful, by the way, um, answer. And, uh, and we will put that in a magazine. It should be in your book, actually. You're probably right. It's like, actually, it's page 37. Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> I mean this respectfully and, and truly. Uh, but like uh, at church, how is it dating in church? Like, is do you meet people at church? Like, uh, is it like a, you know, do people give numbers out in church or do they trade Instagrams or like how do people do this? You know, that is a really good question. And like specifically in my prayer time, I've like literally told God, I give you my heart. So whoever's going to have it has to literally go to you to get the key and unlock it. So I don't know how that works because mm. they literally have to go to him to get it. Okay. So I don't I don't wow. know how that okay. works. 
and and uh, and uh, and there has there been some strikeouts from from some guys like uh, that they thought that they went to him and then they're like hey here's a you know whatever <laughs> I don't even know about the, about the connection this is a funny conversation to me yeah. though um, uh, um, I would say that there's been like last year I feel like I went ahead of God sometimes I think we run ahead of God because we're like oh you know and I don't think that's the way to go because that leads to heartbreak and other things like that so like that's why I'm really determined to do it like this way and it's not traditional as the world sees it right it's like the way I believe it and the way I'm going about it is like it's it's a courtship like it's being friends with somebody it's um if you feel that inclination and my church actually taught me this and I'm so excited about it that there that there could be something and and there's a desire then you literally can like just take it up to God you can fast you can seek God and see if that's that's the one so it's very different do they have like single um uh like coffee times you know like back back when we were uh, like in uh college right um or whatever in that age range they would always have like the single events you know right. like you would meet you you would hang out with other people who were single yeah or um very i don't really ever remember like a married person you right. know wandering around at the coffee donut I, place. I think that they do but i'm i'm kind of new to this church so i haven't i haven't gone to any of their single ministry mm. or if they have one i'm not too sure so I don't know. Or even if they have like age ranges that they do it in, you know? Yeah. It's very I mean, interesting. It's a good filter, mm -hmm. right? Somebody should really think about this <laughs> and uh, make something <laughs> out of this. Yeah. Um, uh, are you going to write a dating book? Oh, you have so many good questions, you know? <laughs> I think she's being facetious <laughs> there. I can't quite tell. No, so but many I'm, good uh, questions. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to believe that she actually kind of meant that question. No, I do. I actually have already designed the cover for it. and Do you have really? The theme. Of yeah. your dating book? Yeah. Wow. It says we don't need sex. Okay. That's, That's... going to be a popular one. <laughs> That's the name of it. <laughs> For dating, of course. Are you, are you referring, marriage are you is referring a very to like the important... men or the women? Like who who doesn't need Everyone sex? Everyone when you're dating. <laughs> okay. So obviously when Grandparents you're maybe or like parents <laughs> or you know. Uh... <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, so my son is like uh, you know, almost 17 here. Right. Yeah. And so um, you know, the whole high school dating thing is like a weird He goes to a Christian school, um, but at the same token, obviously that doesn't really mean anything. Um, I think maybe I think it you does. have to have those real conversations with him. You do. We do. We have conversations. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, um uh, it's not a my dad. I didn't have these conversations with me. I mean, it, it was kind of inferred, and you know, and then we had whatever. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like I grew up. My dad was a pastor, so it wasn't like you know. He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing how it how it unfolds even in our youth today. And I don't really know. Um, I don't know very. I don't know. I haven't talked to enough youth youths. Yeah. Is that the word youths? Youth, youth. You want to put it? You want to put a T in? Ute? No, Utes. just youths. Youth. Um, <laughs> like youths. I haven't, put it, I haven't talked to enough youths uh, about uh, their dating and or premarital sex and or is it like what? Say, I'm, I grew up in Kansas, so that's a whole other thing. You know, yeah. it's like um, we didn't have apps or anything else to keep us not apps. You know, you know, like whatever. Yeah. iPhones, iPads, all that. Yeah. We didn't have as much. So the problem was is. Maybe there wasn't enough distractions. Maybe there's more distractions now that keeps people from, or I don't know. It's yeah. an interesting thing. Well, I think that... Um, Maybe you could devote a chapter to that in your next book. Like as far as the You're, children are yes. concerned. Yeah. I think that um, one of the things I do with my son, he's 12, is so I, I, I didn't also, I didn't have real conversations with my mom who raised me in the church about these things. Obviously, they had like the promise ring I don't think any parents like, like to talk about it with their yeah, kids. Yeah, but I'm... I'm choosing to be different about it with him. So I know he's entering middle school, um, going to the seventh grade, and I'm just like, listen, there's going to be kids that are going to talk about things and, you know, whether it be pornography or whatever the things are. But listen, this is the way God has intended us to be, to be with. So I'm open with him about it and to let him know, like, you don't want to open a door to the enemy because that's all that that's doing. So I am like spiritually, like I very much do speak to him about that. And I think one of the things that I'll start doing 
with him this next year is praying with him at night because we pray, we do gratitude and, and read the scripture uh, is like praying for his future wife. Because what's that doing? Mm. It's really like spiritual, like you're activating something yeah. that's real, but it's also subconsciously reminding him the power and the importance of really like you can you know, give this to the Lord and watch him surprise you in setting that apart. So I think being open about it is key. It wasn't for me and I went I went really wild um, because I felt like I had disappointed God and I don't want him to feel disappointment. I want him to know that he loves him and that he can, if he makes a mistake, I mean, that's unfortunate, it's okay, but not to run from him. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Well, all right, Trisha Love Vargas, thank you so much for dropping an incredible amount of wisdom on us today. Thank you. Um, and not even just about hair extensions or <laughs> magazines or books, or, but uh, everything and so many different topics. So um, uh, you're a delight. And uh, and it's been a pleasure to meet you and um, and I appreciate you and good luck and I'll see you at this uh, this event coming up very very soon the LA Style Awards and where is it again the Grammy Museum the- June twenty second. Yeah, that's right. And LAStyleAwards.org. There it is, LAStyleAwards.org. We have like 20 left. Yeah, <laughs> and if you miss that event, make sure that you get your LA Style magazine. Nice. Or book. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Thank you. 